one of the reasons a lot of people don't adopt EBR is in the past, yeah, you know, the, the sort of the mindset from coming out of Oracle Corporation has been that EBR is, I've said it's a Boolean thing. It's true or it's false. You're either not using EBR, but if you do, you have to go the whole hog. Cross edition triggers, additioning views, very careful usage, actualization everywhere, and you will never ever have an outage ever again. That's the purest model. Now that's great, if you do that, that's awesome. But it doesn't mean that's the only way you have to use EBR. And I wanna stress that EBR is far more useful, not for this utopian goal of zero outage. I know lots of customers that have a principle of where if they're changing code, if they're changing triggers, peel SQL, etc., they'll use additions for that. But if they're changing the underlying structure of the tables, then they'll take an outage. Yeah, it's a cost benefit for them. If you don't want to take an outage for that, then yes, it's more complicated. But just rolling out code changes, why wouldn't you create a new edition so you can roll those changes out, test them in isolation, prove them on your production environment before letting them, you know, unleashing them to the whole world? Using EBR for just that might be useful. What if, for example, I want to do some changes to a table and there's a trigger on that table that would normally fire? I don't want to disable that trigger because that disables it for everyone. I could create a new edition, basically put a different trigger or no trigger in that new edition and do my maintenance there. There's all sorts of ways where EBR can benefit you, not just about 100% outages. So have a look at EBR. You might be surprised at the number of very useful facilities you can get out of it without being focused on eliminating outages.